Welcome to this video. This video provides an overview of forecasting methods in operations and supply chains. Forecasting methods are paramount in operations and supply chain management for several critical reasons, particularly when it comes to planning and controlling complex processes involved in reconciling supply to demand. This video will examine the importance of forecasting, it will also identify and explain the different types of forecasting methods, and wrap it up by identifying the benefits of forecasting. So, let's dive into the world of forecasting and discover how it can empower organizations to optimize their supply chain, reduce costs, and enhance overall efficiency. Let's begin. So, why is forecasting important to the planning and control of operations and supply chains? There are three main reasons why forecasting is particularly important when reconciling the ability of an organization to supply goods and services to the demand of customers. The first reason is that forecasting helps organizations anticipate demand fluctuations. This is achieved by analyzing historical data and market trends. Based on these types of analyses, businesses can make informed predictions about future demand for their products or services. This enables them to align their production and inventory levels with expected demand, preventing overstocking or understocking issues. Accurate demand forecasts are crucial for maintaining efficient inventory management and reducing holding costs. Secondly, forecasting aids in resource allocation and capacity planning. By knowing the expected demand, companies can allocate resources, such as labor and machinery, more effectively. This prevents resource bottlenecks and allows for optimal utilization, ultimately reducing operational costs and improving production efficiency. Thirdly, forecasting supports decision-making and risk management. When organizations have a clear view of future demand and potential disruptions, they can make informed decisions regarding procurement, logistics, and supply chain strategies. This proactive approach helps mitigate risks associated with unexpected events, such as supply chain disruptions, ensuring business continuity and customer satisfaction. Now that we have mentioned a few basic reasons why forecasting is important in operations and supply chain management, let's identify and explain the types of forecasting methods used in the context of operations and supply chains. Before we do this, it is important to note that there are two main categories of forecasting methods. These are quantitative forecasting methods and qualitative forecasting methods. Quantitative forecasting methods Quantitative forecasting methods are statistical and data-driven approaches used to predict future trends, values, or outcomes based on historical data and mathematical models. These methods rely on numerical data and are particularly suitable for scenarios where there's a wealth of historical information to analyze, allowing for the identification of patterns, trends, and relationships within the data. Under quantitative methods, the commonly used methods are time series analyses and causal models. These quantitative forecasting methods are used to make predictions about future demand, sales, inventory levels, and other crucial factors in supply chain and operations management. The choice of method often depends on the nature of the data, the availability of historical information, and the specific forecasting needs of the organization. Now, let us explain what these methods are and how they are used. Time Series Analyses There are two commonly used types of time series analysis that are used for forecasting in the context of operations and supply chains. These are moving averages and exponential smoothing. In moving averages, simple or weighted moving averages could be used when forecasting. In a simple moving average, all data points are given equal weight, meaning each observation in the time series contributes equally to the average. In contrast, weighted moving averages assign different weights to different data points, giving more significance to recent data or specific periods. Moving averages are used to identify and smooth out short-term fluctuations and variations in data. They provide a clearer view of underlying trends and patterns. In operations and supply chain management, they are often used to forecast demand, sales, 
or inventory levels. As for exponential smoothing, this involves assigning exponentially decreasing weights to past data points, with more weight given to recent data. It calculates a weighted average of past observations, with the weights decreasing as you move further back in time. Exponential smoothing is particularly useful for capturing short-term changes in data, and it is sensitive to recent data, making it valuable in operations and supply chain management. It's also employed for forecasting demand, sales, or inventory levels, especially when recent data holds more significance. The next commonly used quantitative method are causal models. Under this method, we have linear, nonlinear, and multiple regression models that can be used for forecasting. Causal regression models are a type of quantitative forecasting method used in operations and supply chain management which are used to predict future outcomes based on the relationship between a dependent variable and one or more independent variables. These variables are symbolic representations of data or information in numerical values. Causal models assume that there is a cause and effect relationship between the variables and aim to quantify how changes in the independent variables impact the dependent variable. The commonly used types of causal models are linear regression, multiple regression, and nonlinear models. Linear regression models are the most common type of causal regression models which assumes a linear relationship between the dependent variable, for example a demand for a product, and one or more independent variables, such as price, advertising spending, and economic indicators amongst other factors. To do this, linear models are used to estimate the coefficients or weights of the independent variables to predict the value of the dependent variable. When there are multiple independent variables identified in the same model, a multiple regression model is used. This allows for the consideration of several factors simultaneously in forecasting. The model estimates coefficients for each independent variable, indicating the strength and direction of their impact on the dependent variable. As for nonlinear models, this is used in instances where relationships between variables may not be linear. In such situations, nonlinear regression models like polynomial regression or logistic regression such as in binary outcomes, can be used to capture more complex relationships. Feeling a bit puzzled about these quantitative methods? We've got you covered. So, no need to fret. These methods will be featured in our upcoming videos, where we'll delve deeper into these methods and supplement our explanations using practical examples, making it easier for you to grasp their meaning and practical applications. Qualitative Methods For qualitative forecasting methods, these are subjective and judgment-based approaches that rely on expert opinions, market research, or qualitative data to make forecasts. These methods are employed when historical data is scarce, unreliable, or when the future is influenced by factors that are difficult to quantify. Under qualitative methods, the commonly used methods are expert opinions, qualitative market research, judgmental forecasting, these forecasting methods are particularly valuable in situations where there's a rapid market changes, or when human expertise and understanding of market dynamics are critical for making accurate forecasts. Now, let's explain the different qualitative forecasting methods identified. Expert judgment. In qualitative forecasting, the use of expert judgment requires reliance on the insights, opinions, and experience of experts within an organization or industry to make predictions about future events or trends. In the context of operations and supply chain management, expert judgment is a valuable tool for forecasting when historical data is limited, unreliable, or when there's a need to incorporate human expertise into the decision-making process. Examples of its application in supply chain management include predicting demand for new products with no historical sales data, anticipating the impact of geopolitical events on supply chains, and assessing the potential effects of disruptive technologies on production processes. Market Research Conducting market research is another valuable forecasting tool. Market research, which includes customer feedback, focus groups, and surveys, 
is a qualitative forecasting method used in operations and supply chain management. Market research is used to provide critical insights into customer preferences and expectations. These insights inform decisions related to production scheduling, inventory management, procurement, and distribution strategies. By aligning operations and supply chains with market demand, this method helps optimize processes, minimize waste, and enhance customer satisfaction, ensuring efficient and effective supply chain management. The last qualitative forecasting method that will be explained in this video is the judgmental forecasting methods which includes the Delphi method and scenario planning. These methods are called judgmental forecasting methods because they rely heavily on human judgment and expertise in making forecasts. These methods involve the subjective opinions, insights, and expertise of individuals or groups of experts. For example, when using the Delphi method, this requires a structured approach to forecasting that involves collecting and aggregating the opinions of a panel of experts. In the Delphi method, experts are often consulted anonymously, and their feedback is compiled and shared with the group in iterative rounds. The goal here is to reach a consensus or convergence of opinions over multiple rounds, resulting in a single, refined forecast. It's particularly useful when you want to harness the collective wisdom of experts and minimize biases. As for scenario planning, this is a strategic tool used to envision and prepare for multiple possible futures. Instead of seeking a single forecast, it involves developing several distinct scenarios, each based on different assumptions and driving forces. These scenarios represent a range of possible outcomes, helping organizations anticipate and adapt to various future conditions. Scenario planning is especially valuable in situations where uncertainty is high, and it encourages flexibility and preparedness for a spectrum of potential developments. It's not about achieving consensus among experts but rather about exploring the breadth of plausible future realities. These are the forecasting methods commonly used when planning and controlling operations and supply chains. It is worth mentioning that there are other forecasting methods not discussed in this video and we encourage you to do further research to find out what these other methods are. This is where we will stop for this video. In subsequent videos, we will focus on how these tools are used in forecasting and operations and supply chain management with the aid of examples. Please look out for our future videos. So that will be all for now. As usual, we are grateful that you have stopped by, again. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.